So we ramped up a little bit here because I could never get the liner to come all the way back into this little V. There's no way it was going to stretch that far. Same thing over there by Corey, but I've left a huge planting area here. And this would just be sedums, ground cover of any sort, nothing really tall, really just something that's going to kind of creep and grow over all this. And as this plant develops, of course, the root structure of that plant will help hold that soil in the place. If anything wants to wash in, it's got a sea of rock and gravel that it's got to move through before it could ever get into our water system. So this little bit right here would be insignificant to the water quality of the pond. So because you guys asked for it, we're gonna film this. Jack over here, say hi Jack. Hi Jack. <laughs> is working on kind of a unique edge situation. So many of you guys are wanting to know how to do edges and different edge treatments. So if we roll that liner like this, and he's got a lot of extra here, so we can actually trim a lot of this off because we don't want to keep all this liner. As long as he rolls it and we keep at least four inches extra, so if this ever settles or gets low, we can bring it back up, we're good. So we're gonna fold it like this, then come in and bring soil right up to this. By bringing soil all the way up to here between here and the patio, now we allow for some ground covers and some other plants and stuff to come in here and really soften this edge. So we'll let Jack kind of prep this, get ready, and we'll show you what that finished result looks like. Chris is over here doing something a little different. You can see we've got our upper pool, our upper pool, the headwaters to this big long system that goes down into there is fed by a sphere, which is no way enough water to give us what we need to feed this whole system. So we have one five to nine pump coming up here. We're gonna tee off of it. Some of the water is gonna come to this. I'm guessing about a third of the water if maybe a quarter of the water will come to the urn so you can see we've got big boulders set pretty close to this sphere it's done for a couple reasons one we ran out of real estate and we didn't have the luxury of pushing this stuff way back out that way because this hill drops off so drastically two it looks cool but third notice what we did with the, all the boulders if that were to splash out that rock there is sloped this way so any splash that would hit that is gonna run back into the pond this big one will actually retain a lot of splash so any Anything that were to fall down under the gravel will just bounce back over in here but we still need a way to figure out where to bring in our spillway so we've got Chris over here he set this rock actually put it up on a couple wall stone pieces yep. stuff like that behind him Correct. got elevation so there's a big gap underneath this and then he's just tucking that spillway in right behind it by bringing this up onto a couple blocks we get the gap which allows all the water to escape out from underneath it making it super easy to hide this as long as our liner he's got a plenty of liner pull that liner up for us Yep. He can bring that liner up way up to the back side of this, then bury the rest of this with a bunch of soil, and this will probably end up just being cobbles ramped up back and through there, making it really easy. Our plumbing will come in from the back over here, so we'll have a three inch line that comes in back this way. We'll tee off of it right here, put a ball valve to this, because this is a bulkhead fitting threaded right into the liner. This line feeds our sphere. Going up through there, you can see we've got that two inch pipe in here, just some silicone gooped around it, the light put in, and then the other line is going to go around this way. We'll put a ball valve someplace probably right next to this other ball valve. And that way we can regulate the flow between the two of them. All right, Jack, looking really good. Let's see, take a look at that finished product there. So we ramped up a little bit here because I could never get the liner to come all the way back into this little V. There's no way it was going to stretch that far. Same thing over there by Corey. But I've left a huge planting area here. And I guess huge is a relative term, but at least I've left an area for some plants. And this would just be sedums, ground cover of any sort nothing really tall really just something that's going to kind of creep and grow over all this and as this plant develops of course the root structure of that plant will help hold that soil in the place if anything wants to wash in it's got a sea of rock and gravel that it's got to move through before it could ever get into our water system so this little bit right here would be insignificant to the water quality of the pond so that's a great looking edge gonna look even better in a couple days when we get all the plants in here Corey's gonna go ahead fold this up show him how that's just gonna get folded down Corey. So I dug out the bottom of here a little bit just to be able yep. to have room to put it in. Going here and our edge is kind of right along this fabric. So I'm going to just fold it like, down. Fold it down like that. Trim off whatever necessary if you need to, but it looks like we've got plenty there. And then just keeping that edge obviously lower than the patio. What will look ridiculous is if this edge here is higher than this because the only way to hide that is with soil. If the soil comes up, it just looks weird. Mm -hmm. Every type of water feature should always look like it's carved 
in through the hillside, not ever built up. It just looks better that way. So good. All right, we're just about ready to turn this thing on, but before we turn it on, we always like to give it a good rinsing. Tons of helicopter seeds, lots of dust, lots of construction dust, lots of good dust from the rock and gravel, us walking up and down here with muddy feet. There's plenty of stuff in here, and we want to give them a really clean system to start off with. So we can come up here, and you can see Kobe up here. He's got a clean out pump sitting at the lowest area, and you can see the flow that's coming through here. Now, as he's using that rock, that garden hose, he's got this pool pretty good. Once that pool gets good, we'll move the garden hose down to here, and then just show him how, like, what we don't want to do is just go like this, because this just rinses the surface of the rock by getting this hose down in there, then kind of shuffling your feet around or moving that rock and gravel around. We really want to get that deep clean. So we want to make sure we get down below the rock and gravel. So even with your hands, Kobe, a couple times, moving that stuff around, moving all of that dirty water over to this area works really good. Now, it works kind of good that way, but if I take the pump and move it into our clean water from over here, we can really, really rinse it out good. So Kobe, let's go ahead and move that nozzle off of there. And so on every job, whether we're doing a pond or a pondless, we always bring our collapsible fish tanks with us. This tank's 500 gallons of water, and the idea is instead of using garden hose pressure, we can put the clean out pump in here, pump this 500 gallons of water up to there using the force of our clean out pump, not the garden hose, and really flush this thing out quick. So let's go ahead and get that pump in here. We're gonna pull that fire hose nozzle off because that actually restricts the flow quite a bit. And if we pull this off and get that up there, we'll get an enormous amount of water pressure. So let's plug this baby in. Upper pool Lower, the upper pool looks clean. You ready? Yep, working. Coming all the way up. Now let's show them the pressure, the difference in the pressure, yeah. like. There's not a garden hose in the world that's gonna give you that kind of pressure. So now we really get to push that stuff out of there fast. We've got the other clean out pump keeping up with it. And we'll just keep pumping that dirty water until it pumps out clean. After that pool, we'll move down to that pool. After that pool, we'll move down to that pool. A garden hose would take an hour and a half to do that. This will cut it down to about 15, 20 minutes. So a great time saving trick. And um, oh my gosh, take this clean out tub, clean out pump, use that to rinse everything down rather than a garden hose. And you can cut hours off of your clean out. Holy smokes, guys. The dust has finally settled. The guys just took off. We still have some finishing touches left to do. We are going to completely landscape this space after talking with the customers earlier today. So it's not quite done done, but the water is flowing. All of the original contracted work is now finished and I cannot wait to show it to you. So without further ado, let me turn this camera around and just show you the magnificence that Team Aquascape put out there yet once again. And what a great way to start the season for us building outside here in Chicagoland. So without further do here you go whoa look at that waterfalls absolutely incredible. I am standing on the back edge of this DG patio. This is decomposed granite. It's like a midnight gray color. It comes all the way out through here. You can see we've got some accent boulders. There's a dry creek bed. That's the overflow that extends out from the reservoir. I'll show you that in a second, but the intent is to have a bunch of Adirondack chairs around the outside here with a fire pit in the middle and then steps. It connects to this lower patio that comes from their walkout portion of the basement. You see they've got their barbecue already set up over there. And then you've got the steps that lead you across the reservoir and as you're crossing the reservoir you just see this beautiful waterfalls 
that begins with the upper pooling area in the sphere. I love how this dry creek bed overflow area turned out. We still have to come back and cover the vault, but you can see how we've got a mixture of size cobbles, big gravel, little gravel, and then it just kind of serpentines its way back through there. You can see we've got some of these big outcropping weathered limestone and moss rock pieces to help carry the overall design aesthetic through. We've got some irises tucked in over there. They look a little dry, so we're gonna go ahead and water those, but we've got some aquatic plants down here. Looks like this one's temporarily put in, but we also have a massive iris down here. And we've got some coral bells dressed up. Some of the little edges over here, some sedum and moss all growing in through there. I'm gonna go ahead and walk up through the stepper staircase over here. And first I wanna come back over on this little pathway leading you out to this open expanse. But look at those steps and everything looking back towards the house. See how the staircase kind of wraps its way around. There's a decomposed granite, little landing up there, and then the steps carry past it and then you walk up through. Let's go ahead and take a walk up through there. You see we've got some pathway lights. So we're gonna completely landscape this whole back berm area in through here. But I love how these steps twist and turn and come through here. We're gonna put some DG in through here as well. But then here's this upper pooling area. Straighten that light out. Here's that upper pooling area that we talked about with that sphere. And this is their upper patio, kind of walkout area. But what a really, really cool headwater beginning of the stream. You've got the sphere. It's not overpowering. You can see we've got some big rocks in through there. And then just a really cool waterfalls falling in and underneath the bridge. So just a really easy pitcher style waterfall comes underneath the bridge element and you can see that the neat thing about this bridge is it kind of comes out and then carries you over and then back and that's done through strategic rock placement using some of these frame rocks framing out the bridge then of course you have the waterfall falling over and we'll go back down and see that in a second but i just love how everything turned out and i can't wait to completely landscape it and give you guys you know the finished finished product probably that video will come out in a couple of weeks so we've got one pump on this project and it's a 5,000 to 9,000 SLD variable speed solids handling pump and that is sitting in the pump vault and there's a three inch line it goes all the way up there to a spillway and then we manifold it off and put about a thousand gallons going to that sphere but then the rest of it is going to the spillway and then that is creating this beautiful waterfalls I love the change in direction the different widths how it goes from wide to narrow back to wide back to narrow and this is actually a little bit different fall where we've got two rocks kind of pinched together but just the change in direction this one is super cool how it just disappears back behind that little frame rock for this waterfall and then dog legs back over it just turned out outstanding Sorry, the energy's a little bit low. We are dog tired. It's about 90 degrees with a real feel of about 190 today. So the sun is obviously out as you can see, but we did a fantastic job. Huge shout out to all of Team Aquascape on the inaugural project of 2021 out here in Chicagoland. It just turned out fantastic. Can't wait to landscape this. Hope you guys enjoyed following along on this project. Make sure you come back in a week or two when we put out the video of the entire thing landscaped with kind of a more of a project showcase style video. A lot of beauty shots, that kind of stuff, and we'll really kind of go over and deep dive you know the construction process the amount of stone that kind of stuff so we'll kind of go through that as always thanks for your support for the team aquascape channel make sure you come back every tuesday thursday sunday at 9 a.m central standard time and if you haven't already click the little notification bell so you can stay up to date on all the crazy content that we're coming out with we love what we do we love our jobs and we love all of you more importantly see ya